tips and tricks. Hand over to Ukraine. Hi, I'll be showing a couple of uh, videos with uh, tips and tricks. Some of them may not be new to you, but I'll be happy if you just take one that you did not know about on the video. Uh, how do dimension walls and grids? Okay, and you select the wall. Thank you, Rob. It will dimension all of the wall with the openings. You also have the option by keeping it as a, um, the pick option as the entire wall to uh, dimension the walls by picking the all the intersecting walls it will not do all of the work for you but it could speed up things now but when you want to dimension all the grids at once how can you do that the trick here is to create temporary walls that will intersect the grids and then choose the option to dimension with the intersecting grids. so creating just a rectangular one for the shape of this building it will work again going to the dimensioning tool picking the entire wall and their options at the bottom you check the intersecting grids option and then when you click the wall it will pick up all the grids after you are done with dimensioning the grids you can delete the walls and only the dimensions at the end will disappear and you, you'll keep all the other ones. Okay, these are also posted on the Chapman Taylor Beam YouTube channel. You can watch them here um, when this gets uploaded to the Embrock website or the Chapman Taylor Beam website. All these have the same tune, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this could be used as a follow-up to uh, Kevin's presentation. Uh, sometimes it's easier to model things in place, but they are not good to be kept in the model. So how can you quickly convert them into a regular family? So in this case, they wanted to model a, a facade wall feature, like some brickwork here. And it's easier to model in place be, because you have the context around uh, when you're modeling it. So let's uh, create the model in place first as a generic model one. Just call the test. <coughs> when you, if you were to create this family in the family editor, you would not have these lines to pick with. So this way you're modeling the things that meet that specific so this is just an in-place family and now let's convert it into just a regular loadable family <coughs> those slats that that guy was creating Kevin he could convert these quicker <laughs> yeah. so you just copy it you select the in-place in model without finishing or before you finish it and then you create a new family this time using the metric generic model template and then you just go and paste it here it is you just move it to be nearest nearer to the intersecting reference planes now when you load it into the project it's just a regular family so you quickly converted an in-place one into a loadable family and therefore not uh, honoring the model file size by copying and pasting the multiple in-place family you could add parameters to, to to this family obviously if you wanted to next one very quick one ribbon panels very a very easy one i see myself as a, a bit of a happy guy meaning like I like to install lots of stuff and have lots of add-ins and then my ribbon gets a big um, let's say uh, with well I have lots of stuff let's say that I want the Omni tools to be expanded so how can I expand it well just click and drag to the left meaning you can reorder 
the um, you can shuffle the order of the add-ins that you have on the roof. Okay, create roof for the variable section. Um, for tapered insulation, for instance, um, let's create a, a very basic roof slab. Using the concept, so just a very simple shape, rectangular one. Be sure to uncheck the box where it defines slope so that it, it will be flat. Flat roof slab, nothing new here. But now let's edit the, let's modify the sub elements of this roof. You can change the elevation by selecting the nose or an edge. I missed the tune. We could have the end of the song. So you just move this up to 100 mil. So if you look at the in, se in section view, you can see that now it's tilted just by editing the um, sub elements. But it's of the same thickness, we just change its slope. What if we want to keep the, the floor underside to be horizontal and the other one sloped? You just check this box under the layers for variable. When you click OK, now you have a, a roof slab with variable thickness. Now what if you have more layers to this roof and only one of the layers needs to be um, sloped. Well, it's a matter of inserting a different layer, which is another function, add some thickness to it, and just check the box for the for the layer that you want to have variable. So it was the bottom one, so the bottom one varies its thickness. If you want to make the other one, just check the box for the layer that we just added and then it's the other one that had their thickness change. I'm quite sure how many new levels there. Yeah. Okay. It's one of those tools that you sort of teach on day one, but the amount of people that don't know it's um, actually yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, a uh, couple of quick ones. Um, this one, May or, may, or not be, may or may not be applicable. So um, you want to achieve something that might be similar to this, but uh, something that's specific on your project. But basically this is with curtain walls. We have uh, two types of curtain walls. We've got a linear length and then we've got two that form a bit of a curve. And to be able to achieve the results that we just saw at the start of this uh, with the linear one it's really easy uh, with a wall all you have to do is select the wall go to edit profile and then adjust or delete the top and bottom if you want to make something funky and wavy and then just draw a new profile so hopefully um, everyone here that's used Revit for any anything longer than about 10 minutes and has been on kind of a basic training course will have been taught something like this and obviously good modeling practice uh, will will mean that you you should make sure that this is a closed loop before you finish. I put that in there uh, on purpose, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, obviously that one's pretty easy. But how do you do a similar sort of thing with a curtain wall? Well, you can edit the profile of a curtain wall. Uh, so you have to think kind of outside the box. So the way uh, one one way of doing it is to use a roof by extrusion. And to do that, you have to specify a reference plane first. So in this example, I've created a reference plane. And that reference plane has a name, which I've called bottom in this instance. So, and then I'll go about creating my uh, roof by extrusion. And I'll select that reference plane. And I'll just accept that. And then I'll just do a sketch. So I'm sketching one line to represent the, the overall shape of the top. Just to speed this bit up. Do the same on the top, and then select the curtain walls and attach the top. Well, again, in this instance, it's a, it's a slightly less than live demo, but I can see that the walls don't actually intersect. So I'm just going to extend, move these over. So 
I'm just going to reattach these again. So I'll select the two sections and attach the top to the to the roof. And then I'll attach the base as well. So a lot of people forget that you can attach bases of walls. Uh, that's because nobody looks at the options bar. Uh, so if you select the walls and click attach, what we're doing here, there's actually an option on the options bar to select base and that allows you to attach the base as well. So that applies to floors and um, various other bits and pieces. I'm just going to do a bit, little bit of clean up here. Um, so the, the final part of this is obviously you won't want this, this roof in, in your model. Uh, well, maybe you do, but um, in this instance, I certainly don't. So uh, we use work sets on every single project we work on just because we need multiple people to work in the project at any one time. So we've created a work set that we've checked that's saying um, not visible or visible in view and we've said no. And then we're just going to put these elements onto that work set. So this is a really quick and easy way just to hide things and you can achieve results like this. You can also achieve it with uh, masses as well if you want something even more kind of <coughs> out there. Okay, so cuttable casework. This, um, this is a real, real interesting one. Uh, so I'm just going to crack on with this. It's, uh, it's quite a uh, it's head scratcher. Okay, so we have two pieces of casework here. Um, these, as we'll just cut a section through just so you can have a look, see what we've got. It will magically appear in a second. There we go. Uh, so we can see that both these are exactly the same height. We're cutting through them, uh, so they should appear identical. So both of these families, I can assure you, have been built in exactly the same way. So they all have visibility controls. I'm just going to go through each one and prove that if I was to select it, the, the elements which aren't visible should actually be visible because the visibilities are turned on. And because we've got nested components, I'll go into those and select these elements and show you that I've selected it should be visible when it's cut through. So I'll go into the, the other one that's not showing it and show you that one. And basically, you'll see that the settings are exactly the same across both files. Okay, but there's one subtle change that we'll come on to in a second. And that subtle change is to do with how the, the cut plane is set up inside the family. So if we look at the view range and look at the cut plane, in the family that's showing it cuttable, it's set to, it's cu actually cutting through the element. But if we look at the other one, the, the view range is actually above the element so I'll, I'll show you what I mean in elevation so that's set to 1500 so I'm just going to draw a reference plane here just to show you where the uh, cut plane is so there's the there's the cut plane you can see that that doesn't actually cut through the casework but with casework families there's a really weird um, kind of quirk to it where if you have the uh, cut plane actually cutting through the, the casework and you load that into the pro project it will show it as cuttable but if the if it's not cutting through it inside the family then it won't show it as cuttable and there you go you can see the changes in the update there did anybody know that has anybody come across that yeah so there's a few nods so well, yeah if, you, if you've got your cut plane in your view higher or lower does that affect it or is it still dependent uh, on yeah. the yeah, so it needs to cut through it anyway. Um, it's that's only if it's cutting through it. So if if it, if it should be showing as cuttable, um, then it's worth to go into the family to check whether the uh, the cut plane in there actually is set to cut through the geometry inside the family.